Welcome back to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. We're coming to you live from inside ETFs in Hollywood, Florida. We're going to take a look at the risk of complacency with Mark Lindblom. He's a portfolio manager over at Western Asset Management. And Mark, after a year that we had in 2019, a little bit of volatility coming back in January. If you were complacent on a day like Friday or Monday, it kind of catches you off guard. What are some of the biggest market drivers you're going to be paying attention to? Well, you're right, Jill. Uh, last year was an unbelievable year uh, for the fixing of markets. You yeah, had to work really hard to do anything wrong. In fact, uh, our active ETF, WBND, was the number one rated intermediate bond fund last year. So uh, I take your point. But you have to be very careful this year in terms of the complacency, this Goldilocks sort of environment that we have right now. Right. And because of that, we've gotten uh, more conservative in terms of our portfolios in a number of different ways as we enter 2020. All right, and let's talk about your, your market outlook and expectations for 2020. Clearly, there's going to be some volatility in the U.S. markets as we get closer to uh, the U.S. election. But now we're looking at, you know, other geopolitical issues like Iran. Then you have what's going on with China with the uh, coronavirus. There's a couple of outliers that we weren't talking about in the beginning of De- at the end of December. We weren't. And uh, one of the things that we have built into our portfolio based upon that, those unknowns, is good diversification, and particularly when you look at the fixed income markets and the issue of duration and interest rate sensitivity. Most people have been of the opinion rates have to go up at some point. Ours has been different in that uh, we think inflation is quite low, and therefore it's very important that you keep a longer duration. But to your point, in case you hit a uh, volatility or speed bump like China or like the virus or like the geopolitical, you really want to have some duration. And that's what we built into the portfolios of what's worked so well. Sitting here today, that has worked extremely well over the last week. Yeah, it certainly has. And I think that's why we're starting to see the growth in fixed income ETF really take off because it's not easy to manage a fixed income active portfolio just on your own. The average investor can't do that. Like you said, with the duration and a lot of these bonds only trade by appointment. So having this within a wrapper and having managers there to to work that portfolio for you certainly has lended to the growth within the ETF space. Certainly has. So we are all active management. We don't have any passive ETFs or, or portfolios. Uh, so this first fits us perfectly. It's, it's yeah. just another way we can deliver active management to our clients. What sectors are you finding opportunities in? We've gotten a little bit more conservative, as I mentioned. Mm-hmm. So like last year, where we thought corporate bonds were quite attractive. This year, we have a bit of a different view, not based upon economic expectations. We're quite optimistic on the economy. Uh, but the valuations, as you all know, are just pretty lousy. Whether you look at investment grade corps or, or high yields. So where we have shifted our focus has been to uh, emerging markets. We think that there's still very attractive real yields there. Uh, very boring things like agency mortgages, a place to hide out, if you will. Mm-hmm. And then very select areas of the high yield market and the bank loan market where we think that there's still good value. Yeah, it's really interesting. Let's go back to high yield for a second. This is a, a big conversation that we've been covering today as, yeah, as well. Um, certain stocks do have high yields, certain bonds do have high yields because the underlying isn't performing as well, and that's how you see the yield increase. But when you look at high yield, if you have a company that has good cash flows and they're growing their dividend and they're buying that shares, um, or is that what you look for, healthy companies underlying the high yield? We are. We're yeah. looking at companies with the help of our analysts in mm-hmm. certain specific sectors where leverage is under control, uh, that they are not issuing debt and bank loans repeatedly, that we feel that they're good businesses, good management, and those are the types of companies that we love. We're being very selective this year, unlike last year. We think this will be a bond pickers year, not everything going up. Well, someone at Inside ETF seems to agree. We have some celebration music going. Mark, it was great to see you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. And thanks for joining us at Inside ETFs. I'm Jill Malentrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.